Bedrooms are a really super important part of RimWorld because every colonist needs one and there's always a moodlet associated with it unless it's like, you know, a completely average bedroom or something. There's a few videos out there on sort of what is the best bedroom and the most efficient bedroom and all that, but none of them are really super detailed and didn't really get into it, which is what I intend to do here, looking at every material, every wall type, door type, floor type, mixing and matching of all of that and figuring out ways to sort of just gives you that, that little bit of edge to push the bedroom into a slightly better shape than it should normally be. If you're only curious about what is, for me, the most efficient layout for certain tiers of bedrooms, then I will be getting to that toward the end of the video. First thing to know, bedroom stats. The biggest stat for a bedroom in any room in particular is the impressiveness, which is an overall general mix of the wealth, space, beauty, and cleanliness. To a degree, with some exceptions, you need to have a nice balance of all of these things. A really big room that's dirty and ugly will be just as bad as a really small cramped room that's very wealthy. Again, there are exceptions to this, but they're extremely hard to get to and nothing to really hinge on, but it's worth noting that you can do it with a really cramped room, make something pretty okay. The general impressive thresholds are less than 20, the room is considered awful, which gives the colonist a minus four moodlet. At 20, the room becomes dull, where the colonist doesn't really care, it doesn't give a positive or a negative moodlet, same deal with mediocre which starts at 30 impressiveness. At 40 impressiveness, the room becomes decent, giving a colonist plus two. At 50, the room becomes slightly impressive, giving a colonist plus three. The colonist gets a plus four at impressive, which is given at 65 score. Very impressive at 85 score, gives a plus five. 120 score gives extremely impressive, which is plus six mood. And past that, it's really difficult to get to, but 170 becomes unbelievably impressive, giving a plus seven and then 240 score is wondrously impressive, giving a colonist plus eight. To get to wondrously impressive is extraordinarily difficult, but you can do it. It just requires a little bit of luck. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be aiming mostly for the rooms that are dull and mediocre and maybe just decent and slightly impressive because much past that, it's either requires so much work that it's simply not worth it for the moodlet, or there's so many different variables that go into it that it would take me a year to cover in a video. Things like the different qualities of art, the different materials the art is made out of, the different craftsmanship and the furniture that are put in, maybe you have a really nice end table and a really poopy dresser that average out to be okay and mix in with a good bed, mix in with some awful art that's made of sandstone, there's just, there's so many things. I'm not going into all of that, it'll take way too long, but I will touch a little bit on what it takes to be wondrously impressive and unbelievably impressive and all of that. But for now, we'll go through and look at first off, the materials. As far as beauty goes, every wall, floor, and door has a different stat according to the material that it was made out of. There's also a different wealth associated with each of these, but we'll be getting to that next. As far as walls go, silver is plus 6, gold at plus 20, jade at plus 10, marble at plus 1, and all of the mountains that you can smooth out are plus 1 except marble, which is plus 2. Mountain floorings when smoothed out are all plus 2, even if it's marble. It's tied with the carpeting that you can make. The, the normal stone that you can put down outside of a mountain is all plus one, regardless of material. Concrete, minus one. Metal tile, plus one. The silver tile, plus five. And gold, plus twelve. Door-wise, same as the walls, pretty much. Plus six for silver, twenty for gold, jade to ten, and marble at one. Auto doors also have the same amount of beauty, but they also have different wealth. To show off this wealth, I have here two of the exact same room, just with a different door. The room on the left is a standard door at wealth 254. The one on the right is an auto door at 397. It's a big enough jump in wealth that it actually pushed the room impressiveness overall into dull because it, it finally crossed the threshold there. Um, awful, this is actually probably gonna be like 19.4 impressiveness overall. So it, it rounds up display wise, but it, it's actually rounding down. It's a little weird sometimes like that. Whereas this room here, it's actually impressiveness into the 20s, putting it into dull, which if this were a bedroom at 21 dull, it'd give no moodlet, whereas this would give a minus two, I believe. So it's something to keep in mind, little things like this. I go into it a little bit with these examples, but as you get into the really, really big bedrooms and you try to get like super impressive with them, there's so many other little things that you can do that this is just one of many. For the purposes of this entire video, auto doors are something to consider and keep in mind because it can be that little difference between being a moderately impressive and a super impressive bedroom, but other things like quality of the building that you do, 
the different type of art that you put in, the material that the art is made out of, all these other little things can affect it. And there's just so many different little variables that I haven't gone into it very much because it would take me a year to do so. But keep it in mind, it's a thing, try it out. This is where things might get a little bit messy. I've got here different rooms made out of the different wall and door materials that you can have, just to sort of compare and contrast the wealth. There's carpeting in front of these rooms, but that really doesn't matter, it doesn't affect the room at all whatsoever. That was more just for me for personal uh, use later on when I was making rooms, so I could just at a glance see what was worth working with. But we've got uranium here at 590 wealth, wood 196 wealth, plasteel 831. We've got steel at 254, gold at 8,099, silver at 904, jade at 536, sandstone 214, the other stones interestingly 222. I'm not sure why sandstone is ever so slightly different, and then marble even more different at just 218. And if you happen to be a mountain dwelling colony, we've got here marble smoothed walls at 419 and 342 for everything else. Flooring wise, it paints a similar picture, but it should be noted before I get into this, some rooms just overall throughout this video, some will have flooring beneath the door, some won't, sometimes it'll be a different material. Material beneath the door though, it doesn't matter in the slightest. I have here two rooms that are the exact same except the material under and through the door. We've got the room on the right with concrete beneath the door and through the door at 2,980 wealth, 31 overall impressiveness. The one that has gold beneath and through the exact same stats. So if you ever see me panning through and you see a room that's just got a different material beneath the door, just keep in mind that it actually doesn't matter at all whatsoever. And in fact, for your buildings, if you're trying to make something really nice, but you don't have that many materials, like maybe you're doing a cool uh, like a gold floor here and there, just remember that beneath the door doesn't matter at all in the slightest. You can save yourself a little bit of money that way. However, we have here 192 wealth for the sandstone. The marble at 192. Concrete 169. The marble flagstone 182. Limestone flagstone 182. Marble tile 191. Sandstone tile 191. Carpeting at 214. The sterile tile being 254. 2,980 for gold tile, silver tile 452, metal tile 225, wood flooring being 176, and paved tile 180. I should also point out that for carpeting, all the colors are the exact same. For stone tiling, these are all the exact same as well, even the marble. And flagstone wise, also the same. And another side note before we get into the nitty gritty of things, there was rumor a long time ago, I don't know if people still believe it or not, that bed positioning mattered for rooms. Some people said that having it near the door was good, some people said that having it in the middle is best, some people said that having it off at the corner is the best because it's more out of the way and colonists care about that more. But in fact, stat wise, literally doesn't matter. All three of these positions are the exact same room, stat wise. As far as space goes, there is such a thing as too big. This is literally too big of a room for it to recognize. I have the room stats display on, I even have a bed in it. It should be considered a bedroom, but it's just, it's, it's too big. The game doesn't see it. The largest room that you can have, in fact, is this. This is a 64 by 63 room, or 63 by 64 actually, doesn't really matter though. And it gives 350 space, which is actually pretty low for this size room because you can achieve that same amount of space with the rooms off to the left. These two rooms here are both 28 by 12, which also give the 350 space. Now it should be noted that this is only mediocre room, whereas the previous one at the largest was decent. That's just because there's more wood wall in this room, so it's technically a higher wealth, which is enough to push it into the decent threshold, which would give a colonist a plus two moodlet. So hey, there's that. But a room even of just this size, which is really small in comparison, if you put even just a little bit of effort into flooring it, you can make it somewhat impressive, which gives the colonist plus four moodlet. And you could also put a dining table in here and turn it into a rec room, and then all of that is somewhat impressive, which all gives moodlets, and this is just, it's fantastic. It's just, it's still a bit large. Which is why I've got the rooms around the side. 
All these rooms on the side here are all considered dull, which gives no moodlet if you remember. The difference between these three wooden ones, uh, not a whole lot, just different sizes showing off sort of how that affects the room. Space 33, it's still a dull room. Space 21, still a dull room. Space 11, cramped, still a dull room. Doesn't really matter a huge deal, but it does come into effect when you get a little smaller than that. This is super cramped, just four space, but it's still dull because I was able to put down some gold tile. It should be noted that it only takes two squares of gold tile to make this happen, so if you want to look fancy, you make these two outside tiles gold and it looks like the whole room's gold. Or if you want to hide it and be humble, you put the gold beneath the bed and that's totally fine too. That, that also works. Now is when we get super messy, because there's a bunch of different ways to do things depending on what's available, at what stage of the game you're at, and what type of a map that you've started on. Because sometimes you'll have marble, other times you won't. So I try to cover what happens if you do have marble, and how that generally affects things. But if you just have regular stone, how that affects it, if you want to be cheap, if you have the materials to spare. There's a lot of things to go over, so bear with me here. It's going to be a little unorganized and sloppy, but we'll get through it. All of these rooms here are all dull, except one of them being mediocre, so these all represent rooms that a colonist will not mind or care about at all. Down here we have the fancy gold, which becomes mediocre, and even just 2x2 two two interior. M mediocre, it, it still doesn't really give a moodlet, so is it worth going for? Not hugely. Silver, same deal, it's, it's dull. This is a silver bed, silver door, it's just normal quality, oops, normal quality stuff. Nothing too fancy, but it, it's still dull, so if you're ever wondering if it's worth spending the currency silver or the currency gold to try to get these things, the answer is not really, not hugely. The only times that this is really useful for me is in situations like this where you just need to boost it a little bit, spend a little bit of gold on just like a tile or two, just to push it over the edge. But making an entire room out of it, uh, it's, just, it's just silly, really. Here we have a dull bedroom that's got jade walls and a jade door and just a simple wooden bed with a dark carpeting. 24 dull, there's a little bit of leeway there still to go up or down. It still doesn't matter for a colonist. But the interesting thing with jade is it's actually pretty useful to use because the door opening speed is still 100%. It still doesn't burn. And it doesn't take a whole lot of jade to make, it's only 25 jade. And you get that easily from just one little piece of mining jade because even a skill 4 miner can pull out somewhere in the 40s for jade. It's a really handy material to have and something that I personally forgot about and haven't really been utilizing. And usually when I see jade, I just, I sell it or I make a club out of it because it's pretty good for blunt, but really it's, it's quite a nice building material for bedrooms. Now here, I've got a couple of wooden rooms. You might be thinking, well, how the heck do you manage to get a zero moodlet room that's two by two out of wood? Because I had to do gold tile here, but this is just wood flooring. And this is where furniture quality comes into play, and this is one of the extreme examples that it's not something to hinge on. Because we have here a legendary dining chair, but wait, also a legendary wooden bed. And it, re it basically requires you to have somebody who's a godlike constructor who also gets an inspiration to have anything of a decent chance of getting legendary. It's super difficult to do nowadays but it's super worth it if you do manage to get it. So I thought I'd include it just in case that situation happens to come across, but uh, uh, it's nothing to really work toward. Should be noted also the dining chairs are interesting in that they're pretty beautiful and they've got a really good wealth value, but they don't decrease the amount of space in a room because the counters can simply walk over it and they don't get slowed down at it, by it at all, unlike an end table or a dresser. It doesn't affect the space at all, so it's a really nice, easy way to push the push the impressiveness threshold of a room without decreasing other things. It's just, it adds more to it. In fact, if you want, you may as well fill the room with dining chairs, and sometimes you get lucky. Maybe you get a couple really good ones, and you might get even just a simple wood room like this up to maybe slightly impressive, though I, I sort of doubt it. You'd have to be really lucky for that. Since legendary is really not something to hope for, if you do have somebody who's really good at construction, you can manage to put together some masterwork gear, and usually masterwork has art with it. In fact, I think pretty much all the time nowadays, masterwork and legendary both have art. So that's a really cool thing that was added. But since legendary is really difficult to come by, a really good constructor putting together masterwork on a somewhat regular basis, you can get away with a dull bedroom if you have carpeting in. 
For those of you who avoid wood like the plague, and for pretty good reason because of its flammability, I have here a marble wall structure, although the door is only steel. I will be getting into fireproof stuff in a second. The room here, it requires you to have just a decent constructor, a good dining chair, a normal wooden bed. It also requires you to have an artist because it requires normal art. Now, the overall impressiveness of the room is 20, which is dull, but literally anything slightly worse than this piece of art here with 68 beauty will, it'll display 20 impressiveness, but what it actually is is like 19.4 or something, where it rounds the number up, but stat-wise, it rounded correctly. So while it's 20 impressiveness on paper, it's actually still considered an awful bedroom. So maybe save yourself the trouble and just get like a good artist and try to get some slightly better art than this. But the beauty here, it, it definitely needs to be at least 65. So since you have marble walls, you probably have access to marble blocks, which means you can put together some small marble sculptures. So I say go for it. For those of you who want something that is actually honestly fireproof, I have marble wall, marble door, dark carpeting still, but it requires you to have a normal marble royal bed as well, just to give you a 22 dull. Now, these are all single beds, and ordinarily I'd recommend a double bed because there's always the possibility of a colonist getting together with somebody else, then they want to sleep with them, and if you don't have a double bed, it becomes a bit of an issue that way because they always want to sleep with the other person and you miss out on chances for loving which is a really good positive move that, that you definitely want, so ideally just start with double beds from the get-go. But royal beds you may not be able to start with because of the gold that it requires, so that's why I had just single beds here. This is more for like early game stuff. If you do want just a double bed and you don't want to spend the gold to make a royal bed, I do have here it requires jade, but a jade double bed with jade walls and a jade door and dark carpeting gets you just barely a dull room. It's difficult to do, and I forgot to build the vent, but the vent just gives you a little bit of wealth, so it's actually okay. But that's how you do it. It's it's not easy, but you can do it. Royal beds are definitely the way to go if you can afford the gold. If maybe you don't have marble on your map and you have just some other stone, I have here a limestone room with a limestone door. This is also dark carpeting and it has a limestone royal bed in it. It requires basically the same thing, but it's just barely dull. If this thing is even just, just the least bit dirty, you run into a huge problem. It's, uh, it's not ideal, but hey, it works. I'm not sure on the case scenario of this next one, but it's a steel wall with a steel door. Maybe you don't feel like stone cutting or your priorities are elsewhere, or maybe you don't have stone cutting tech, but you can put together a royal bed. I I'm not really sure. But steel doors, steel walls, it's a wooden royal bed, but the impressiveness is only 18, even with dark carpeting. It's not quite there. It needs that little bit of boost, which is why I mentioned Jade earlier, because Jade is perfect for this kind of scenario. If you don't mind upgrading the bed to steel, and you put together a little bit of Jade in the wall and door, you can put together yourself a dull bedroom at 20 impressiveness. If you really want to go with the wood, you'd have to add in more jade walls, but I figured steel is easier to come by than jade, so this is probably more preferable for a bedroom. But there's that. Now, vents I mentioned briefly with this room here, it adds a little bit of wealth, so I figured why not go for this? It's <laughs> it's it's a vent room. It, it, it actually works. You need a little bit of jade in the corners. Corners do matter, but it's just a normal wooden bed with a steel door and normal dark carpeting and a bit of jade but if you have the steel for it, you can put it together. It works. It's just strange. I have here another jade bedroom. This is just a single bed. Still works pretty well as long as the walls are all jade and the door is jade and the carpeting is dark. But 25 impressiveness. It's all jade all around the board. Just a single bed instead of a double. It's a nice comparison though of what the bed does to a room. Because it's an impressiveness of 25 versus 20. While the wealth is higher, the space of this one is double. It's four space versus two space. And that's just because of walkability. For some reason, there's still two tiles of walkability on here. I think it's the foot of the bed that maybe counts. I'm not really sure. This has four. I, I'm not sure how space works. I think it's got some sort of strange logarithmic thing going on with it. But the space alone makes this a lot more easier to work with. And it, it makes you want to go for just the single beds more often because of the space constraint. But... Again, the colonists, if they get hitched, it's it's a big problem then that way. So 
I don't know. I mean, it's not a huge deal deconstructing this and upgrading it to a jade double bed at least, but it's something. If you are really pressed for space and you want something decent, it takes a bit of work, but we've got that here. It's a 20 dull and a 20 dull. This one here being plasteel walls, except the front of it being gold and the flooring being silver tile with just a legendary wooden bed. This could be yours. It's, it's not easy to put together because of the legendary bed. It's also super expensive, but hey, it's an option. There's also a masterwork bed here. If maybe you can't quite afford the legendary, but it requires a lot more gold, it requires dark carpeting and marble wall, but you can just barely get this also. Again, super expensive, super tricky to do, but if you're really pressed for space for whatever reason, this is how you do it. Wah. As far as comfort goes, comfort isn't really a stat for everybody. Personally, I don't really like comfort very much because it drains so quickly throughout the day when you're not in something comfortable that for a lot of people, it's not useful. For haulers and cleaners, they're not gonna be comfortable while working, there's no point. Hunters, same deal. Cooks, sort of, depends on the chair that you give them at the stove, if any. But for the most part, it's really just good for crafters because they're gonna be in a comfy chair while working. But the comfort then applies to the chair that they're sitting in at the time of working, so the bed doesn't really matter. The leftover comfort from the bed is just, it's a weird thing. Personally, I don't go for it, but some people do. And in fact, in some rooms, it's worth considering putting in the dresser and end table because depending on what it's made out of, it can offset the space that it reduces. We have here on the bottom right, neither of them. It's a 27 dull room, but the space is 11, beauty at 0.41, wealth at 402. It's okay, nothing wrong with it. It's just steel wall, steel door, metal tile, normal wood bed, no problem. But if you throw in a dresser, the space drops down, but the wealth increases a lot and the beauty increases a lot. This is just a steel dresser. It's still dull, and it's 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 almost mediocre, which still zero moodless, so there's not like a huge hoopla about that, but it's, you know, let's keep that in mind. The end table, it's like a smaller dresser, basically. Not quite as much wealth, not quite as much beauty, but it is more than none. And if you have both, the space is decreased to eight, which you would think would impact it a lot, and it kind of does, but the beauty of 0.73 and the wealth of 565 greatly offsets that, and this is actually a bit better of a room than without. So if you've got the space, you might want to consider going for this and putting these in because it gives you the additional comfort which you may not care about but it gives you enough points that it can almost put you over a next threshold it's something to keep in mind for the larger rooms i had one earlier but here's some more honest fireproof rooms slate wall slate bed slate door and just paved tile 23 dull on the right though if you actually have access to marble definitely go for it because just a marble wall marble door Marble bed and concrete flooring. Still dull, just barely dull, but it counts at just concrete flooring too. That's nice, especially since this is actually a smaller room than the slate one. Again, here off to the side, we have another example of the furniture for comfort actually coming in as a benefit. We have a slate double bed with a slate end table and slate dresser with slate wall, slate door, and also still just concrete, 24 dull, which is still a little bit higher than without concrete and without the furniture. It's not enough to push it into mediocre or any moodlet that has any effect at all whatsoever, but hey, it's free comfort that still improves the quality of the room. You may as well go for it. For those of you living inside of a mountain, or at least nearby a mountain, who are thinking about putting the bedrooms inside the mountain, I have here limestone mountain stuff, marble mountain stuff compared to just limestone brick stuff, and marble brick stuff, with the normal beds of the same, you know, rock, the door of the same rock. We have limestone all being 34 impressiveness, mediocre, which is nice, but keep in mind that mediocre and dull both give neither a positive nor negative moodlet, though mediocre is fairly easy to push into the next threshold, compared to just the 27 that you get from the limestone brick stuff. If you have a marble mountain to put into, I say definitely go for it because 37 impressiveness, mediocre, super close to being the next threshold for a positive plus two moodlet all the time always. It's really close. You don't have to do a whole lot here to make that the next threshold. Compared to just the standard marble brick stuff, 30 mediocre, a little harder to work with, but you can do it. So generally, it's not the hugest thing if you don't live inside the mountain and you just want to put the bedrooms outside of a mountain, maybe just use the mountain for defense then, maybe you're worried about infestations and all that. Totally fine, not the hugest difference, but if you do end up going for a mountain, try to go for marble because that's that's pretty close. That's That's worth it. 
And for funsies, the best bedroom you can possibly actually have. It's a legendary royal bed with three pieces of legendary art. The entire room itself is wondrously impressive. It is so super difficult to get to this point. It's only 248. 240 is the minimum threshold for wondrously impressive. And I have legendary furniture in here. Three pieces of legendary grand art made out of gold with a legendary gold royal bed inside of a completely sterile room. It's so difficult to get this up there, but it is possible with an extraordinary amount of work and it's only for a plus eight moodlet. It's, it's, it's not worth the effort, basically. That, that's what I'm trying to say. Don't, don't worry about it, okay? Just don't. It's not worth it. Don't throw it. Don't fall for it. It's a lie. And here we have the sort of the final, the takeaway type thing. What most people are probably interested in, generally, what it takes to get each tier to a degree of bedrooms. Now, again, I didn't go for the super impressive stuff because there's so many variables that go into it with the build quality and who did it and how much art is in there and what the art was made out of that it would just take way too long to go through. So this is just at least the first few tiers for getting no moodlet and just a bit of a positive moodlet. From there, I think you can probably see sort of a pattern or maybe generally what you can do to a bedroom to make it even better to try to push it over the threshold. But for the most part, for these bedrooms to make them better, they just need to be bigger. So keep that in mind. For those of you looking for a bare bones basic budget bedroom for either the early game or maybe for those of you who just don't want a negative moodlet, I've got here rooms that aimed for dull that require really basic materials that you start the game with generally. We have wooden walls with wooden normal furniture inside, concrete flooring, 21 dull. The exception here is that it takes three bits of paved tile to make this dull. You need three, two won't do it. If you want to go with all all paved tile, that's fine. You won't get the um, a positive mood lift for it though, so three is generally what you'd want to be going for. And you can hide the three beneath the bed and the dresser, and they're out of sight, out of mind if you want just a nice uniform concrete look. If you want a double bed, which I would highly recommend doing, we have that here. Just one paved tile for this one though. If you do not have marble on your map, you can't go any smaller than these bedrooms, so there's no point. But if you do have marble, you can go smaller, because with marble bed, marble door, wooden end table, which can also be marble if you'd like, you can put together a 23 dull impressiveness with a concrete floor. Pretty easy to do. If you want to live inside of a mountain and it's not marble, then you can put this together with the smooth limestone flooring, smooth limestone walls, limestone bed, and a limestone door. You can put together a 27 dull, no problem. If your mount happens to be made out of marble that you're living in, you can smooth out the marble walls and floors and put together a couple basic wooden dining chairs. They both have to be normal, otherwise it's not good enough. But you can do it with everything else being norm uh, marble. It's a 2x2 two two interior bedroom, super small, but it still works. A colonist will not mind this at all. If you want to go a little bit fancier, maybe you don't want to smooth the flooring at all, you can go with dark carpeting, which is a little bit better, but still doesn't really save you much at all. Carpeting is technically better, but in this case, it wasn't enough. It's it's all still normal. It's just an alternative for a little more wealth. On this middle column here, we have the decent bedrooms was the goal. Now, the thing with these is because you have to add in the chairs anyway, just to improve the wealth and beauty a little bit without decreasing the space anymore, you may as well then just also add in a table and make it also a decent dining room for another positive moodlet when they wake up and eat the meal that they slept with because colonists do that a lot. I'm not really sure why. So these are a little bit different in that regard, but if you don't want the table for whatever reason, maybe you've got like a super awesome dining room and you literally just want the bed, then fine, just get rid of the table and no problem. This room here is a wooden dresser, wooden end table, wooden bed, wooden table with two steel dining chairs. It is 44 decent if it has a dark carpeting in it and granite walls. It's got a little bit of wiggle room in there, but you know, it's, it's whatever. If you happen to have access to marble though, you can have the same room, but it's at 47, which is really close to the next threshold of slightly impressive, which I have here, just by adding in a steel plant pot with a day lily in there you can make it slightly impressive, just barely, but it's there. If you happen to be living inside or near a mountain and want to put the bedroom inside the mountain, we have here limestone at 42 decent, and the marble being 43 decent. So those are also kind of sort of close, but I, I shaved off a little bit of space. 
So while you could potentially have a slightly impressive bedroom, that wasn't the goal with those. Um, in fact, we have that a little bit later on. The biggest thing about living inside of a mountain is you get to save a little more space this way. It just takes more work making it happen. This left column indicates stuff that is slightly impressive, and I try to downgrade stuff to wood when possible just to try to save up on materials, but obviously the stuff that is wood, if you upgrade it to steel, it's even better, but it's not better enough that it puts you into the threshold, like the next threshold or anything like that. Like I downgraded what I could to wood while still being within the same threshold, if that makes any sense. But obviously if you have the steel to kill, then go for it. But we have here granite wall, the dark, uh, dark carpeting with two steel plant pots with day lilies, a steel end table, a steel table, two steel dining chairs, and the wood double bed you can get away with just barely 50 impressiveness. Also, steel door. If you happen to be living inside of a mountain that is not marble, you can get away with smoothing the walls, smoothing the floor. You don't need the plant pots, but you need to, need to put in a wooden dining chair in addition to the two steel dining chairs that you have there. Oh, an extra chair. But hey, you don't have to deal with the plants. That's nice. If what you're living in is in fact marble, you can smooth the floor or smooth the wall, and you can go with all wood furniture, and you don't even need that extra dining chair. 51, slightly impressive. Aw, yeah. You cannot make the room any smaller, though, unless you have, like, really cool furniture inside. I tried. Just can't happen. It's too tight of a squeeze. And if you're looking for bedrooms that are even nicer than that, I mean, again, just, just generally keep in mind that... The chairs, they don't take up any space. They add wealth and beauty, so throw those in and just generally make the room bigger because that's the most limiting factor of all these rooms right here are all just size. Obviously, if you can live inside the mountain, go for it. If it's not a marble mountain, that's usually okay. You can get away with it. It just means sometimes you have to spend a little more steel than wood. But if you don't care about wood or maybe you don't want to go out and chop trees because you're inside of a mountain, so why bother? Then heck, even even better. And that's that. That's the three tiers of basic bedrooms and what it takes under different circumstances. A general guideline on certain sizes that you need, how to make super teeny tiny bedrooms and make those effective, as well as a bunch of different materials. And just in general, what the materials each do. It's. I think that was pretty much everything. I think I covered a lot. Unless you wanted to see like really impressive bedrooms. But again, you just you basically follow the same system that I've got here where it's changing the materials around from wood, upgraded to seal perhaps. Ideally, you live inside the mountain. Carpeting is a little more wealth than the flooring that you would normally have inside of a mountain when you smooth it. Just little stuff like that, adding in dining chairs and throwing in art. Art's a really big one. None of these have art. This is all assuming you have just a decent constructor. These are all doable. If you have a really cool constructor, you can make like masterwork beds and stuff, and sometimes they'll still have art on them, and then you can actually just make art and put them in, and. There's so many variables and ways that you can make bigger, better bedrooms than these that I just, that's, I didn't even bother. Like, there's, there's no reason I'm making a video for that. But this was just what it takes to make decent bedrooms that a colonist doesn't really care about, or maybe likes a little bit, and how to avoid the really poopy ones. And I, I hope it helps people out a bit. I would like to be doing more guides like this in the future. If you have an idea for a guide for me to do, let me know, as well as the myth series. I've got a, a RimWorld myth debunking thing that I also had going on for a bit. Um, I'd like to continue doing those. So if you know of any myths and rumors and stuff that people just seem to believe, but there's no actual concrete evidence for, let me know and I'll, I'll see if I can get to the bottom of it and, and I'll make a video on that as well.